Hey there, and welcome to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete a short walkthrough of how you can join the upcoming playthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen on this channel. Like I said in the recent channel update for March, I would like to offer every Patreon supporter in the naming rights tier and above the chance to have a character of their own appear in that series. And since XCOM 2 offers a pretty neat character editor with tons of customization options, I need your help with that, because I definitely do not want to spend a week customizing all of your characters myself, so here is where you come into play if you are a naming rights patron. There are two ways for you to join the upcoming series, depending on whether or not you own XCOM 2 already. If you do, then you can use the character pool editor in the game, which you can find in the main menu screen, and if you don't, then you can download the XCOM 2 War of the Chosen Propaganda Center that is available for free on Steam. You can find a link to that down below, and it basically gives you XCOM 2's character pool editor as a free standalone program. Thankfully, that also means that the character creation process will be almost identical whether you own the game or not, but since those of you who already have it are probably a bit more familiar with the character editor, I think it makes sense to explain the process using the free propaganda center, which might be a brand new experience for some of you. So let's jump in and I'll show you a quick walkthrough of how all of this works. Now, in the main menu here you want to click on character pool. This will open up the XCOM 2 character editor and from here everything works the same even if you're using the complete game. Now, you might find that there are already a few characters in here, but that doesn't need to concern you for the moment. What you want to do next is hit the create character button. And this now lets you create a fully customized soldier and of course to start things off you want to give them a name. As far as I know you have 11 characters each for the first name and last name and you can use up to 15 for the nickname. Also, and I think this goes without saying, I am of course asking you to not use anything offensive or inappropriate, otherwise I cannot use your soldier. The same then also goes for your soldier's biography. This can be short or a bit longer, but maybe not too long, and is your chance to give your character an interesting backstory. Why are they fighting the aliens? How did they become a soldier? What is their personality like? Stuff like that. You don't need to provide an overly detailed biography, but a few sentences to give your character some personality would be nice. Following that, you can make a few more general choices regarding your soldier's nationality. There are plenty of countries to choose from here. You can also make them male or female, and you can even give them a voice from another lengthy list of options. Good to go. Roger that. Come on, Will do. Your character's attitude then affects how your soldier presents themselves and also what they are saying during missions, so while there is not an effect on gameplay stats or anything like that, this can still have a somewhat noticeable impact on how your character behaves. Moving on, you can now edit the soldier's head and body to your heart's content. There isn't much I can explain here, just play around with the options and see what you like, but please keep a few things in mind. First of all, just like with the name and biography, please keep things somewhat serious. Yes, there are top hats in the game, and yes, you can make a character run around in a tank top and hot pants, and no, I don't think that's realistic combat attire. A bit of lightheartedness here and there is cool, our three RimWorld series have shown that you can find joy even in the most morbid environments, but try to keep it a bit more subtle if you can. Overall, I would also ask you to go easy on the helmets and face paints, because I would love if not all characters had their faces completely hidden behind masks, helmets or bandanas, or had their faces completely painted in wild colors. After that, you can now customize your armor, and again, this should be fairly straightforward. Play around with the options, perhaps don't have your character run around half naked, and you should come up with a good result. Also, in case you've been wondering, don't worry about the options with the little symbols in front of them. That is DLC content that you can treat just like any other option, as we will be playing the game with all DLC enabled. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You now have the option to change your soldier type and this is where the propaganda center is a little different from the main game, as you can only select soldier or spark, a robotic class here, while the full game offers a few more options. Going into detail about them would spoil a bit of the game's plot though, so let me just say that you can pick whatever you want here and your soldier will then also show up in the game as the type you selected. Please note though that the majority of characters in the game will be of the soldier type or one of the subclasses like ranger, sharpshooter, grenadier, specialist or psi operative, so we should probably make sure that the pool of characters represents that in good numbers. You can also view how your soldier would look like as one of those subclasses, but as far as I know this has no effect on how they eventually show up in the game. What will make a difference however are these next three options here, where you can select what your soldier can show up as. 
Again, the soldier option here is what most characters should have selected, as those will make up the majority of our roster. But if you select the two VIP options, then the character can also show up as a person that needs to be rescued during a mission, an engineer or a scientist, or, and that's what the dark VIP is, as a target that we need to capture or neutralize. So if you want to maximize your chances of showing up, then I recommend checking all three boxes. But if you only want to show up as a recruitable soldier, then you can of course only select that option as well. And with that you are done, now it's time to export the character. So we go back to the previous screen and here we want to select the character that we just created and only that one just in case you have more than one in this list. We now click on export selection and we are now prompted to create a new character pool. Again, you might already have some existing ones, but please make sure to create a new pool for this. Once that pool is created and has a name, you can click on it again and the game will ask you if you want to copy the character you have just created to that pool. Confirm that and congratulations, you now have a character pool file with one soldier that I can import into the upcoming series. The last question is now, how do you get that file to me? Well, first of all, you need to find that file, and for that, go to your documents, My Games, XCOM 2 Propaganda Center, XCOM Game, and finally Character Pool. If you created your character with the full game, you simply replace the Propaganda Center in the file path with XCOM 2 or XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, but otherwise the file's location is the same. Now, here you want to look for the importable folder, and inside you can find the pool you have just created under the name you have chosen. It's a BIN file that should only be a few kilobytes in size and that is the file that you need to send over to me. And to do that, please send me an email to pete at petecomplete.com using the email template in the description below. Apart from the character pool file, please make sure that you include your Patreon username so that I can verify that you are indeed a Patreon supporter. And that's all there is to it, I think. If you are using the full game, please make sure that you are not using any mods to create your character, as I won't be using any in my playthrough, and that could screw things up. Two more final notes. If you are part of the Patreon naming rights tier, but decide not to submit a character, then I might create one for you to fill out the ranks, but to get things started, the community submissions will take priority. Also, very importantly, the deadline for all submissions is March 20th, so starting today you have a bit over one week to create and submit your character. Oh, and by the way, XCOM 2 is currently on sale on Steam until March 17th, so if you want to play the game yourself with the character you created, then now might be a good time to grab it. Also, you can of course submit characters at all times and submissions received after March 20th will be added to the pool in regular intervals, so that people who join the Patreon naming rights tier during the later stages of the series still have a chance to show up. However, for that initial character pool, your deadline is March 20th. And I suppose that's all. Again, you can find a step-by-step -step guide on how to submit a character down below as well, and I hope that explains everything you need to know. Still, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'm sure that I or some helpful people in the community can answer them. That's it. I hope you are as excited as I am to start this new series, but please keep in mind that I will have to manually import and take at least a brief look at all the submitted characters, so it might take a little while until that first episode is ready to go. Nonetheless, XCOM 2 is coming very, very soon, and I'm really looking forward to it. And if you do as well and perhaps also enjoyed this video, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon for a chance to have your character appear in this series. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.